I know what you're thinking. Four nukes from one sheet of plywood? Not possible. I think it is and we're here to prove it. Stay tuned. If you'd like to buy these instead, if you don't have the tools we're going to use today to make them, please check out this coupon code and visit funnybugbees.com. We'll give you 10% off. We sell these nukes commercial grade for $12.95. They work great for making splits. They also work great as, hot as swarm traps. Stick around. We'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, your first step, and this is probably the most important step, is to take your half inch sheet of plywood and make sure you square one end of it, one short end. If you don't square one short end, all of your measurements going down this piece of plywood are going to be, you know, weirdly shaped. It's the, the, the boxes will not go together well, nothing will be square. So, very important. Pick one of the long edges to reference from, in this case I chose this edge, and use a square to scribe you a line down the end and then cut it on, on that line so that this end is square to this long side. And then reference all your measurements going down from either the long side uh, that you measured from or the short side that you've squared up. Do not take any measurements from the other two sides. Our next step is going to be to scribe us a line 19 and 1 8 inches from this end from the short side that we've squared up. 19 and 1 8 inches here, 19 and 1 8 inches on the other opposing side. Scribe you a line. I'm going to use a skill saw to do this so I'm using a clamp on guide. This makes perfectly square or straight cuts with the tape with the uh, skill saw. So let's go ahead and make that cut. For our next cut, this is cut number two, we're also going to come back from our reference short side, 19 and 1 8. 19 and 1 8 on both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. Scribe your line across using a square. and one eighth inches from your end. Now we'll set up our, our, uh, our guide for the saw and make this second cut. Okay now that we've got our guide set up for our second 19 and one eighth inch cut, I'll go ahead and make that cut. Your third cut from the same short end we've been working from is 22 inches. Come back 22 inches on both sides, scribe a line across, and then we'll make that cut. Okay, for our fourth cut, we're going to reference off the same short side again. We're going to scribe a line at 20 inches, do the same thing on the other side, scribe our line across, and then make our cut. For this 20 inch cut that we just measured, which is our fourth cut into this piece of plywood, we've actually got the plywood short enough now to where we can go to the table saw and finish our cuts there for more accuracy. So everything we do on the table, everything we do from now on will be on the table saw. This is the 20 inch cut off our referenced edge that we've been cutting from. I've just flipped the, two, uh, the plywood around, face that reference edge towards the fence so that we keep referencing from it. We'll go ahead and make the cut. With what's left of our plywood, we've got one cut left to make, and that's at nine and a half inches. So we'll set up the fence for nine and a half inches and make that cut. All right, so what we're left with for scrap is, I don't know, about a six inch piece of plywood. 
we've got blanks cut for our backs, fronts, sides, tops, and bottoms out of those other cuts that we just made. So we'll go ahead back to those and start working on them. Okay, we have four seven and a half by nine and a half inch pieces out of that last piece we cut, the nine and a half inch wide strip. This is waste or you can use it for another project. Go ahead and mark those pieces that you just cut back. All four of them back and set them to the side. Now we're going to take the 20 inch strip that we cut, the 20 inch strip. These are going to be your bottoms, the bottoms to your nukes. We're going to cut these bottoms eight and a half inches wide and they're already set to 20 inches long because we cut them that way. So now we're just going to take eight and a half inch strips out of this. We need four of them. Out of that 20 inch strip, we have our four bottoms. The scrap piece that's left over gets two fronts cut out of it. The front pieces are seven and a half by nine and a half. So you can trim this down to nine and a half and then cut two seven and a half inch wide pieces out of it for two of the fronts that we need. inch wide piece we got four bottoms and two fronts mark these as front and mark those 20 inch pieces you just cut the long ones as bottom next step is to take the 22 inch piece that we cut earlier 22 inches these are going to be for your tops your tops are 9 inches by 22 inches we need to get four of them out of this so we'll cut it nine inches, nine inches, nine inches until we have four tops. All right, so we've cut four tops. With the piece that's left over, we're gonna cut our other two fronts. So we need to cut two pieces out of this that are nine and a half by seven and a half. So I'll trim it down to nine and a half and then cut two seven and a half inch pieces out of it. That's our other two fronts, and out of that strip, this is our scrap. Alright, now we take one of our strips that's 19 and 1 8 inches long. These are going to be our sides. This first strip will be four sides, and the, other, the next strip will be the other four sides. We need these 10 and a quarter inches wide by 19 and 1 8. So we've set our fence for 10 and a quarter, and we'll cut these strips out. sides out of that 19 and 1 8 inch strip. The scrap that's left over for this, do not throw it away. We are going to cut the cleats out of that. Alright, so out of this piece of scrap that's left over from the first 19 and 1 8 inch piece we cut our sides out of, we need to get six cleats out of this and these are going to be the hive cleats. They're eight and a half inches long by two inches wide. So we're going to cut six out of this. The first thing we'll do is trim this, okay, or trim one piece of it uh, at eight and a half inches and then we'll cut two inch strips out of it until we have three of those and then repeat that for the second half. Three 
three eight and a half inch by two inch cleats. We'll take the other half of this and do it again. Six, eight and a half by two inch cleats complete. On the instructions, these are the hive cleats. Mark everything, set them aside, and we'll get our last piece of lumber cut. All right, this strip here is the very first strip that we cut off of our piece of plywood. It's 19 and 1 8 inches, and this is also going to be cut into four more sides. The sides are 10 and a quarter by 19 and 1 8. So I've set my fence at 10 and a quarter and we'll cut four strips out of this. That'll leave us with a little bit left at the bottom like on the last piece we cut and we'll cut more cleats out of it. That's four more sides. That gives us eight sides total. So our sides are finished, and we're left with this piece of scrap from the bottom of this piece. Now what we're going to cut out of this is two more of the large cleats, which are eight and a half by two inches, and then eight of the smaller cleats, or in the instructions they're called top cleats, and they're eight and a half by three quarters of an inch. So we'll go ahead and set up those cuts and get it done now. So out of that entire piece, this is our scrap. We have cut eight small cleats, which are three quarters of an inch by eight and a half, and two large cleats, which are eight and a half by two inches. All right, so what we've got here is eight small cleats, eight large cleats, eight sides, four tops, four bottoms, four backs, and four fronts. Everything's cut and we can start putting it together. All right guys, so next step in the process <clears throat> is to take all your backs, you should have four backs that you cut, and four fronts. What we're gonna do in the front pieces is we're gonna drill a three quarter inch hole right near the bottom, of, well right near one of the short sides of all four of these fronts. Then we're gonna take all the backs and drill two three-quarter inch holes on either side of the high end. This is going to allow us, and they need to be at least uh, two inches down from the top. Um, this is gonna allow ventilation for the hive. Uh, nukes are small, weak hives. There are not enough bees usually to provide adequate cooling. Uh, you gotta give them a break until they get going. So we're gonna put some vent holes in these and cover them with number eight hardware cloth in the backs and drill an entrance hole for them in the fronts. We'll get started on that now. All right, so what I've done here, guys, is I've taken and come down two, in, two and a half inches, marked a line, 
two and a half inches down, and that'll be where I center the bit. Alright, that gives us our vent holes and we'll put number 8 hardware cloth on the inside of these. Now we're going to make our front entrance holes. It doesn't matter just where it's at. Just get it about centered and as low to the bottom as you can uh, to one of the short sides. Okay, our next step is going to be to take some number 8 hardware cloth and we're going to block these two holes that we drilled in the rear entrance, or excuse me, in the rear uh, panel of these nukes uh, so that nothing can get in or out. We just want some ventilation. So just take some snips. Cut you a strip. Staple it in. Alright, this is what you want to end up with. Ventilation hole with wire mesh on one side, number 8 hardware cloth. Do that to all four and then we'll move to the next step. Alright, that's all four of them done. Got a nice ventilation system in the back so the bees can get out some of the heat. Uh, if you need a supplier for number 8 hardware cloth, uh, visit funnybogbees.com. Uh, we have it by the square foot and we also uh, sell it pre-cut. Uh, to fit hives, uh, five frame nuke. Please visit our, visit our website to see that. Now let's start putting this thing together. All right, everybody, let's get started on putting these things together. You're gonna need wood glue. Uh, I recommend tight bond, it's great stuff. Uh, and a hammer and some uh, finishing nails uh, or brads. Um, unless you have access to a, uh, a brad nailer. Uh, I use 18 gauge inch and a quarter brads uh, plus glue to put these together. So, and that works great, but if you don't have a, a nailer and a compressor, uh, just get yourself some brad nails and, uh, and a hammer. So, your first step in this process is going to be to take a bottom board, which you've pre-cut, and a rear board back. Get that set up where you need it. Then we're going to place two sides, one on each side of this, and we're going to nail them. So, to start this process, I'm just going to put a bead of glue down the bottom of a side. This is a side piece from the plans. We're going to get our brad nailer ready. Grab another side, put a bead of glue on it. So that we have both sides and then just lay your bottom on it. Like so, that'll hold it up for you while you get your brad nailer ready. Kind of get everything flush, make sure everything's lined up really well, and tack it on both ends. Then do the same thing for the other side. Get everything lined up really well. That'll hold that everything there for you in place. Now before we go all the way down with brads, what we're going to do is grab our rear panel and get it put in. Make sure it fits and it does. So what we're going to do is just go all the way around with a bead of glue on three sides, the two long sides and the bottom. Slide it into place and then we're going to brad nail it. 
line up all your sides. Just make sure everything's flush to the outside. Do the same thing for the bottom. Get everything flush. Now we're going to put on the front. So grab you one of your front boards, mark those, that's the one with the single hole in the bottom. Glue it on three sides, which is going to be the two long sides and the bottom side where the hole is that you drilled. And that goes in the front. Line everything up and tack it. And do the same thing at the bottom. Two more tacks, just make sure everything's flush when you tack it. And then you can go down the bottom. Every few inches, put in a tack. All right, looks good. Now we'll move on to the top and building. This is a what's called a migratory cover. So we'll go over getting that built next. Okay guys, I did want to point out something. When you put the front and the back on, you'll notice that it's lower than your sides. Don't think that you've done this wrong at this point. That actually is what forms your frame rest once you put your cleat on the front. That cleat goes there and this is your frame rest, so there's no router or anything needed. Alright, so you've got the box completed. It's tacked all the way around. You've got a front and a rear on it. You've made sure that the front entrance is on the bottom board that has about an inch sticking out. That's where the bees will land. So your rear board, your rear back board should be flush with your bottom. Now what we need to do is actually put on the cleats, which are these pieces that you cut. Now these cleats attach flush to the top of the sides, like so. And that forms your frame rest. So we'll add those now. One goes on the front, one goes on the back. You're going to need to glue it on three sides on the face so put your glue on the face on three sides like this and then that sticks to the back of your hive and we'll tack that in place with brads just make sure everything's flushed up with the top Tack that in and do the same for the other side. Then do one each at the bottom corner. And we'll let the glue do the rest. Now we'll put the one on the front, so grab another large cleat. These are the two inch cleats. Glue on three edges on the face, like so, three edges, that glues to the front of the hive, in the same place. Hold it there while you tack it. Same for the other side. There you go. So what you can see that these cleats have done is formed your frame rest. Here's a queen ring frame, we can try it out. As you can see here, those cleats form your frame rest.
Now we will move on to the next part of this project, which is building the migratory covers. Okay, to assemble the migratory cover, which is what we're going to put on these, you get one of the pieces that you cut labeled top and two of the three quarter inch cleats. These cleats will glue and brad nail at each end of your top. This forms a migratory cover that you can sit on the top of the hive. To do that, we just need some glue. Just center it about halfway between each end. Get it flush with the outside edge of the wood and tack it in place. That simple. Do the other side. Glue halfway between each side and flush with the end. Then tack it in place. And then what I do, because I use tacks that are longer than the, than the thickness of the wood, so they protrude out the top, is I take a small craft hammer and just knock those over like so. So now what you have is a migratory cover with two cleats on, one on each end that will fit right on this hive. This hive is complete and ready for painting. Don't paint the inside, paint the outside paint your migratory cover. I paint the inside of my migratory cover, but that's because I use a piece of Tyvek, which is a, a, a cloth that you can buy from one of the big box stores, uh, or you can use a piece of canvas. Uh, and I cut a piece that's the size of this top opening, and that's my inner cover, is a piece of Tyvek. Um, and then this goes on over that. So the bees aren't actually exposed to any paint, um, and it makes these lids last longer. So I, that, that's my recommendation. Paint the whole thing. Don't paint the inside of the hive. Use a piece of Tyvek or canvas and, as an inner cover. That's complete and ready. Now these can be used as nukes or swarm traps or whatever you'd like to use them for. Anyway, that's today's project. We'd love to have more subscribers. If you like what we're doing, we'd really appreciate it if you would like us and subscribe to our channel. We bring you a new video each week this was our latest. We'll see you in the next one.